ESPN ranked the free agent quarterbacks, the top eight, including Taysom Hill. Eight is Taysom Hill. Number seven, Marcus Mariota, which I don't know if Marcus Mariota gets a job again. I, I, he might be a backup yeah, quarterback somewhere, starting job. but I don't think he'll get a starting job somewhere. You know where he'd be cool at? XFL. <laughs> yeah. Hey. That's, you can't do that to Mariota. Why? Just, Why? I mean, he is so much better than every quarterback in the XFL. Is he? Is he? P.J. Walker? Yes. Ten times. He couldn't make it in a Colts roster. P.J. Walker could make the Titans roster whenever Mariota was quarterback. I don't think Mariota's that great. I, I, don't think, I think Mariota always had this incredible upside, never really turned out, right? Tannehill comes in, and they become a completely different team. Nobody even talks about Mariota, by the way. Mariota, I think, is a good guy. I think he has a good upside. I don't think he ever found it. I don't know why you would invest in it and think about him being your starting quarterback. No, no, not starting. People talked about Tannehill, though, the same way they're talking about Mariota right now. True. Very true. So, if, and by the way, anomaly of a situation with Tannehill, mm -hmm. Tannehill did. If Mariota can do that, good for him. I would still potentially put... Taysom Hill above <laughs> Mariota, just strictly because what happened to that team? It's not a good look for Mariota. Mm -hmm. Mariota gets benched. Their team immediately goes on a run to the AFC Championship game, strictly because one piece was re removed and one piece was replaced. Now, they got Mariota at seven. Teddy Bridgewater is at number six. That is very low, I feel like, in this entire list. But Teddy Bridgewater was undefeated last year. Teddy Bridgewater hasn't seen meaningful minutes, though, in a long time, aside from this last week or this last season. They did a lot of Latavius Murray. They did a lot of run game. But Teddy Bridgewater played winning football in a system that was built for a completely different quarterback. That, in my eyes, ranks him higher than six. But let's get to the top five. They have Phillip Rivers at five. Nobody even knows if he's going to play again. There's a lot of conversation about him uh, coming to the Colts because of his relationship with Frank Reich. I would love to see him as a Colt. If he is still the same chirpy Phillip Rivers who can still sling the rock and we get another weapon for him, he'd be great with the Colts. Having him at five above Bridgewater is a wild move. Number four, Tannehill. Ryan Tannehill has to get re-signed by the Tennessee Titans. That's something that has mm -hmm. to happen. He had an incredible year last year. I think he had the best efficient, most efficient quarterback in the NFL the last, what, 10 weeks of the season or something mm -hmm. like that. Happy for Ryan Tannehill. They have Tannehill below Jameis Winston who threw 30 – interceptions last year now granted Jameis Winston threw the most yards in the NFL he's past yard, yardage leader but he threw 30 interceptions he was winning games for other teams <laughs> while winning games for his team I mean I, I'm intrigued to see what happens with Jameis Winston everybody especially that author Jameis 101 or whatever mm, yeah. his name mm -hmm. is he's come out and told us that he did not say he needs 30 million Bruce Aarons did not say if I won with that guy I could win with anybody Bruce Aarons said these are all misquotes and all this stuff but Jameis I think is going to have to be very, very self-aware whenever he takes the contract that he takes. Maybe bet on himself for the next two years to see if he can get the next big one. And everybody, Carson Palmer said in that Bruce Arian system, year one to year mm -hmm. two, massive leap because you're understanding a lot more. Will he be able to take a contract that potentially isn't what he wants to be able to prove that he is an elite quarterback with the Buccaneers or somewhere else? I'll be excited to see. And it. a massive leap because he could see now. He, yeah, he did get LASIK, I believe. A lot mm -hmm. of people thought that he was potentially blind. He was <laughs> squinting all the time. Maybe he becomes this immaculate quarterback overnight. Not that he isn't already, but he made some poor decisions, which is a massive part of being a quarterback. Number two, they have Tom Brady. They have Tom Brady at number two. The greatest of all time. Quarterback that has won six Super Bowls. The quarterback who, for the first time in his life, has become an unrestricted free agent. ESPN has ranked him as the number two free agent quarterback. So the best football player of all time, Tom Brady, is only the number two free agent in this year's class behind Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott, incredible football player. Absolutely incredible football player. I can't wait to see what happens. Stephen Jones says that he hasn't talked to Dak's representatives in months. They are nowhere near negotiating a deal, it seems like. Potentially getting franchise tag. Got a new head coach, same offensive coordinator. Will Dak Prescott be able to repeat what he did last year? We all hope so because the Dallas Cowboys are going to be forced down our throat. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to watch mm -hmm. them. It's a lot better whenever they're a good team. Dak Prescott was incredible last year. Watching him play football last year was awesome. But to say that he is a better free agent than Tom freaking Brady is just lunacy. This is something that if you can get Tom Brady in your building, even if he's not playing football, you get him in your building. Well, hello there. Utilize the promo code, pay the bills and get $20 off your first order from SeatGeek. Now, back to the magic. 
the work ethic, the film room, the meeting room, the, the weight room, the practice, the how you eat, how you prepare. Those are things that people cannot teach. Those are things that you have to be able to watch. I was lucky to see Adam Vinatieri. Aaron Rodgers was lucky to see Brett Favre. Tom, I was lucky to see Peyton Manning. I was... That's the thing that Dak Prescott, although he's very good at throwing footballs right now and ran a very efficient offense last year, very, very good, and I think he's going to get all the money. But to say that he's the number one free agent over Tom Brady, a guy that immediately makes everybody in your facility better as soon as he shows up, is just stupid. So in my eyes, that's a big mistake. In my eyes, Bridgewater moves up a little bit higher. And other than that, I think they're about right. But to be honest, to say Tom Brady isn't the number one free agent quarterback right now, just because he's 42 and last year wasn't his great year, which I not 100% sure was his fault, is very stupid because of all the other things that Tom Brady brings to a room, as opposed to just how he plays on the field. Now, if this is for one year, next season, uh, yeah, I think Tom should be ahead of Dak. But if it's you get to keep Dak for the duration of a five, six, seven year contract versus Tom one or two years, probably going Dak. Yeah. And you're stupid. You've never been in a locker room. <laughs> stupid. That's you've we'll never, see. You've never been in a locker room. Like it, that's that's just you've never now maybe at Duquesne you have, which is an Ivy League school. Correct. But to think that bringing Tom Brady into your building is just about what he does on the field is dumb. That, that is just a completely – that's just a, a, a bad take. Not by you. I'm not, no, you Hold agreed on. with it. I said it. Narrow-minded. What's that? Narrow-minded. It is. It's very narrow-minded because what Tom Brady is going to bring to your entire team is much different than what Dak Prescott would. Who, Dak Prescott, great leader, good football player. He's not the GOAT. You would want the GOAT in your building. Just because osmosis, everybody – your trainers get better. Your equipment managers get better, obviously, the deflator. (laughs) Yeah, the the weight room. Everybody gets better when Tom Brady shows up, just from years of experience. I'm not saying Dak Prescott doesn't have experience, but he doesn't have six Super Bowls. Anybody that gets cut from the Patriots gets signed, Mm -hmm. regardless of who they are. If you were good enough for the Patriot way, you're good enough for us. Now you're getting the Patriot way on the market. That's a person you want in your building, regardless of what you think about what he has left in the tank. Even though he threaded the needle on some balls last year and still threw a deep ball pretty well and was still able to dissect the defense and had no help on offense, that is something that you have to take into account for, and that's the Tom Brady difference, to be honest with you. He's the winningest player of all time in football. Like, I mean, even if he's not playing at his peak, that there's, like you said, there's still something to be said for that in the locker room. I agree. If Get you're you to the playoffs immediately, right? I mean, you got to think Brady – Yes. No matter what. Well, Tom Brady's not going to go to a team that isn't going to make the playoffs, right? Tom Brady is going to go to a team that has a chance to win. If it's not the Patriots, wherever it is. But bringing him in just makes everybody better. The defense gets better because he's telling them things like, hey, when you do this, I see this. Like, whenever you're taking this step here, I see what you're doing there, right? Like, Tom Brady just has that experience level of so much success that Dak Prescott, who's very good, just doesn't have. If you can get Tom Brady in your building, you get him in your building. Now, there's obviously five teams that we've talked about that shouldn't. Mm-hmm. Aaron Rodgers' team, Drew Brees' team, Patrick Mahomes' team. Russell Wilson's Russell team. Russell Wilson's team, and probably Ben Roethlisberger's team. Yeah, we, I would not want him. Okay. <laughs> Fool! I watched him play last year. Yeah, we all did. Yeah, and he stunk. Oh, my <laughs> God. The offense was terrible. Yeah. Yeah, he had no weapons. He literally had no weapons. They got rid of Gronk and just thought, you know what? We don't have to do anything to replace this in this particular offensive scheme. Tom probably told him that. 